there are just two facts we need to know in order to solve this question. The first of those facts I think you'll find very intuitive. It's that the slope of parallel lines is equal. In other words, if you have lines with the same slope, they must be parallel to one another. The second fact is that the slope can be computed as the ratio of the rise to the run. What does rise and run mean in this context? Well, if you look at the point of intersection with the x-axis, that looks like that's negative 3, and the point of intersection with the y-axis, which is at 2, you can see that in that segment of the line, we have a rise of 2, because it's going up from the x-axis, which is a value of 0, up to a y-coordinate of 2, so that's a rise of 2 units, while it's running from left to right from negative 3 to 0, so that's a run of 3. So the ratio of rise to run here is 2 over 3. So now we know the slope of this line is 2 thirds, and we know we're looking for a line that is parallel, meaning also has a slope of 2 thirds. Now in order to find the slope of a line, we have to isolate y and look at the coefficient of x. So which of these answer choices, once we've isolated y, would have a coefficient of 2 thirds for x? Now the annoying thing about this question is that when we look at the five answer choices, y isn't isolated in any of them. So there are two ways we can go from here. The long way is to write down on our scratch pad every single one of the answer choices and then isolate y until we can find an answer choice that matches, that has a coefficient of two-thirds for the x. The fast way may be a little bit risky, so you need to decide for yourself your level of confidence is to do some mental work on each of these answer choices and visualize what would be the coefficient of x if I were to isolate y. So I'll just show you as an example how I do that for answer choice a, because it turns out a is the correct answer. In order to isolate y, I'd have to start by adding 2x to both sides and then dividing both sides by 3, and yep, that's going to give me a coefficient of 2 thirds for x. So it turns out a is the correct answer, we can go ahead and move on to the next one. If you found this video useful, go to quantreasoning.com for a lot more where that came from. You should also click that like button and let me know in the comments below what you'd like me to make future videos about. And of course, if you haven't yet subscribed, go ahead and do that and click that bell below so you get notified about future videos. See you next time.